very good afternoon, concierge. This is François Xavier speaking. Oh, thank you so much for asking. I'm always wonderful. London's Mandarin Oriental Hyde Park is one of the world's most exclusive hotels. Good afternoon, man. <laughs> Our royal suite goes for £15,000 a night. If you want to have this kind of hotel, you need the money. If not, how do you pay? <laughs> you cannot pay with love. Offering elite clientele a flavour of traditional Britain. I'm always a sucker for cucumber sandwiches. I think it's the double cream that gets me going. Now, for the first time in its history, busy, busy. the hotel has agreed to open its doors. Good evening. Good evening. Both upstairs. I'm in the royal suite. Oh, good dear. Good dear. And downstairs. Five-star hotel, so they expect top-notch. Chop, chop. They're paying money and I need it now. Check on scallop meat free between two pork and a sea bass, please. And reveal to the world the secrets of its success. I wish you the most pleasant afternoon ever. Thank you. Goodbye. things are really perfectly done and um, I like beautiful things. I'm a perfectionist, so I think the job I'm doing is, is spot on. I can't believe that people don't put things in place on the Francois Xavier is the hotel's longest serving concierge. Good morning, ladies. Good morning, madam. When you pass this door, it doesn't matter if you are a prince or if you have saved money for six months. What you want is the dream. You want the dream life, the glamour. This is why we are here, just to make the dream come true. Well, obviously, sometimes it can be a nightmare, but... <laughs> Good afternoon, concierge. François Xavier speaking. I'm assist you. Mm -hmm. 12.30, but which Hakkasan would you like to have lunch? Mm -hmm. I, I think I shall book the Mayfair one. Mm -hmm. Much better, I think. The, the, the area is so much more civilized as well. My ambition is to be surrounded by people who are happy and who are happy because I make them happy. I need six adapters in my room. I need a big desk. I need a muffin every day. I'm not always the nicest person if the service is bad. Either it's completely right or it's completely wrong. I would like everything unpacked. And they're like, absolutely, so we will do that right away. Yes. That's a good hotel. Concierge Nigel speaking. Good afternoon. Why else would one send breast milk abroad? Oh, dear. With such exacting guests, Francois Xavier and head concierge Nigel have become experts at solving five-star problems. We had a lady guest being slightly delayed on a business trip, so we've had to uh, cur frozen courier transit it from London to Boston on liquid nitrogen. Yeah. You could ask a good concierge anything. If they don't have the immediate answer, they'll seek it, they will find it, they will leave no stone unturned until the guest is content. Thank you. Or even better, completely blown away. <laughs> that's, that's what we're there for, so we embody service. We've asked numerous times this morning for the driver's detail for this private jet transfer today at Farnborough, and the PA needs these details now. An Indian guest was having a wedding in Regent's Park, uh, required uh, an elephant for the wedding to pose with the bride, um, and uh, yeah, we, we made it happen. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Every year, the hotel hosts over 70 lavish weddings for high society and super rich couples from all over the world. Captain, 
The next wedding will be for Chinese entrepreneur Reich. Thank you. His family and friends are flying in from China for the celebrations. I'm trying to relax a little bit, trying to chill out. <laughs> How are you trying to relax? Uh, just keep breathing, <laughs> like all the time. <laughs> Taking deep breath. <laughs> With four different bridal outfits planned for the day, Reich's fiancée Samantha is no ordinary bride. I always taking care of my uh, Samantha's life. Yeah, I'm I'm kind I'm, I'm kind of uh, her assistant. We work together. We have our own business, and also um, I'm do the planning. Wow, Jesus Christ! Oh, look. Okay. One day when we go out for dinner, I told him that, um, do you know my finger size? <laughs> <laughs> Is she your boss? Kinda. She only need to be dealing with the sales part, sales job, and I will be taking care of the rest. So, so she, you're uh, used to looking after her though? Yeah, all the time. Actually, every single day, both work, business, and life. <laughs> uh, I'm a bad girl, I know, but I really like this way because <laughs> This man, he need to do more than me. I thought she she chose the 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 other one. They got a lot of crystal all around the wedding dress, but this is simple, huh? So it looks fantastic for me. He bought me a pure diamond, and uh, he spent all his money. So I feel okay. This guy, I definitely might marry him, because he gave gave me what he has. All he has. Concierge 20, please. Today, a new concierge is joining the team. Thank you very much. Paul, a born and bred Londoner, has cleared four interviews to get his job behind the desk. I remember in primary school we didn't have a set year, it's just a jumper. So that first day of putting a tie on, aged 11, probably mum helped me in. You're going to get princes and sultans, you're going to get celebrities walking, you've got Hollywood A-listers just walking around. You feel like you're wearing posh pyjamas. Certainly a million miles away from my lifestyle. Paul will be schooled in the art of five-star service by the veteran of the desk. Well, hello there. Oh, good morning. So how do you do? I think it's very important to be committed. You need to be very committed from the moment you wake up in the morning. I will show you, and then if you have questions, you ask me. If you don't ask, I understand that everything is understood, mm -hmm. and then I don't explain again. Okay. Okay? Yes, hello? Yes, it's François Xavier, the Mandarin Oriental. I've got a parcel to be sent to Oxford, not to France. Sorry if I lose patience, but when you speak to somebody who doesn't get it, I am sorry, but please. OK? Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Oh, bloody hell. The guest should come first. Guest comes first. Thank you. First rule of concierge, mm -hmm. guest comes first. Mm -hmm. Dota, can you get uh, somebody to pin spot the flowers, please? Yeah, and that's the next job. We're looking for perfection. We're looking uh, for crisp lines, elegant. So the briefing today is elegant. Over the summer, the hotel's ornate ballroom will host the most important day in the lives of some of the world's richest brides and grooms. We've actually got blue little gold tassels coming. That looks better, doesn't it? It's all the little details. And each of them is the responsibility of Paul, Director of Catering Operations. That's better, isn't it? If you're having a wedding in the Mandarin Oriental, spending £100,000, you're inviting 300 of your relatives from all over the world. It's a statement. There is a little scuff marks on the back of the chairs, so little marks here. So would you wipe the back of the chairs, please? People come to hotels for memories. That's what you're creating. You're creating that. If you mess something up, do you really want to mess somebody's wedding up? Somebody's 
special occasion. Chris, second time we've had a problem with florists. These naked candles are not allowed. They're not allowed. Samantha, it's, it's all set up. I, I, I don't know he had it here. <laughs> I thought he just had it in the wardrobe. Soon, it will be the turn of Samantha and Reich to join the ranks of the Mandarin's golden couples. For me, in my mind, Mandarin Oriental is the best a hotel in London, only one, because Chinese chairman Mr. Xi, when he visits UK, he and his wife lives here. I want to make it incredible and unforgettable. We only have one wedding in, my, in our life. There's, there's no divorce. Only husband die. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Carnegie. It's midday, and new concierge Paul has graduated to taking guest calls. Uh, you, so you'd like the in-room dining menu in the Rosebery? I'm going to go and speak to Mr. Carnegie, and I'll let you know straight away. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Which room number was it? Uh, it was 222. Oui, Maître Carnegie, François Xavier, au concierge. Comment allez-vous? Uh, oui, vous descendez maintenant. Mm -hmm. Merci beaucoup, Maître. Au so, I th my French isn't great. It's not a problem? No, Maître Carnegie likes to speak French with me. That's fine. Okay. Growing up, we've never had a massive amount of money. I went to a regular school and did regular things. I live in a, a you know, a, a council estate in, in Islington rather than a mansion in, in rural Sussex. But I've still got a lot to offer the guest. It's the day before the Chinese wedding, and the banqueting team are getting the ballroom ship shape. Did no one, anyone, no one see any of this type of stuff? Or do I have to pick it up at my age, with my bad back? But for front of house, it's not the only event on the agenda. The vehicle has arrived. We've called the room, but they didn't answer. I'll try again now. In the foyer, staff are gathering for the departure of a VIP guest. It's been friends with Tupac, Biggie. Everyone. Imagine his life, man. Steve, we had a call for luggage down. Yeah, it was two trolleys, two trolleys, yeah, take two rooms, yeah. Um, Philip, can you help? Can you go to 115 with a trolley, please? Yeah, it was two trolleys, yeah, I remember. It can be very exciting, it can be very overwhelming. Uh, people get very nervous and, and often make mistakes through nervousness, so you just got to be around. And I guess that's why we're always around when a VIP like this is departing and, uh, or arriving, so that we can make sure that we set the tone. I saw Leonardo DiCaprio the other day came in about a couple months ago to visit someone and no one recognised him. I think only one of my colleagues recognised him. He had a cap on all the way down, his hair out like that, no one recognised him, no one. Only when he got to the room and when they opened the door it was him. He was like, hello, can I get two beers? <laughs> Should be coming soon. From Mr. Jones, Quincy Jones. I am too, man. Look at this weather. You got California weather here, too. Phenomenal. Yeah. Will you bring it back with you next no, time? No, no. You, you had it here already. It follows you around you the sunshine. You I think. know this is not regular normal. <laughs> Hi, Hi, Mr. Here. Jones. Thank you. <laughs> you must have seen a lot, huh? Damn. Quincy Jones. And as usual, 
there are regular customers who need to be made to feel special. How are you? you my friend? Very good. You know when you went, I did a little search. Okay. So do you want to see what they have in stock? Shall I turn sure. to? Sure. So. <laughs> do we need a special? Uh, no. Do you? Do we, Shall we go over there? Francois Xavier has known the multi-millionaire watch collector, Mr. Calvillo, for over a decade. This is very elegant. Yeah. Uh, Frank Muller. This is beautiful. I've got a video of it after. This is, this is Today, yeah. Mr. Calvillo has a budget of nearly 400,000 pounds. And where is he? In France, and if you were interested, if you stay longer here, he's happy to fly over with the, with the product. Tell him to send me first and only with the two prices of the ones okay. that I told you. $250, Okay. So can he contact you directly because he's down there? Sure, he can send me an email. Okay. Okay. And if we are there, we talk and I talk to Fernando. After 17 years and you see people regularly and so on, you build something. Okay, so the, you want the first one and... The one with the round worm? All right. The and the other one, the one with the no, tourbillon mechanism. The junior concierge, when they start, they need to understand that it takes time. It takes time to trust people. Thank you. I will do, oh, I can send you a text on your business card. It takes time to be who you want to be. To help Paul in his new role at the hotel, head concierge Nigel is giving him some words of advice. I think what we've got to be really careful of when we're on shift is not being overly familiar yep. and keeping a refined element. While yep. If a guest turns to walk away, that means they're done with you now. Yep. Nigel wants energy. Nigel wants passion. He wants somebody who is committed to the job. Proactive for concierge for me means almost knowing what a guest wants by sizing them up and summarising exactly what they're like in 30 seconds of meeting them. Yeah. And looking at things like the jewellery they're wearing, the way they're dressed, you use your instinct with that. If you can anticipate their needs, their likes, their dislikes, and, and add an additional feature to a service exchange, it's an amazing thing. I never forget. <laughs> what Thank evening you. stand down? But I'll see the oh. whole concierge on Saturday. I'll Perfect. see. Perfect. No worries, Mrs. Robert. Have a very good afternoon. I love the air conditioning. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Gaining a guest's respect, gaining a guest's trust, and uh, loyalty as a concierge is imperative. It's really important for us to know our guests. I use the term intimately, but I'm not meaning it literally. Personally, I think of all the staff and the receptionist friends. Have you seen the series Cheers? <laughs> OK, so this is it. It's like, this is the place where everybody knows my name. Rule number one, make everybody feel important. Windows. Windows. Uh, oh, here. They need to come down and do it right now. Yeah. No guests are more important to the hotel than wedding guests. She's going to have to come up through and around. Okay. Overseeing tomorrow's Chinese wedding is Paul, director of catering operations. With the horses, we get a lot of, lot of dust comes across here. And what you don't want is you don't want that. You know, that's all tidy now. But along there, you can still see it, so... Paul and his team will be working well into the night to make sure everything is perfect. The type of people that work in hotels is a certain breed of people. You actually live and breathe it. So it becomes part and parcel of you. I'm going to speak to the, the Chinese chef yeah. as, it's, as it's his food. People who work in other industries, they do an eight-hour day, and then all of a sudden, they want to go home. We might need to be there another four or five hours. We don't think about that. Let me take the bag. Welcome to the Mandarin Oriental. Ooh, that's a heavy bag. As dusk falls, the wedding team are joined by the hotel's night shift. Cheers. Taking over the smooth running of all aspects of hotel life. How are you? 
Among them, 22-year-old Vanya, who started cleaning rooms in the Mandarin Oriental two years ago when she first moved to London from Bulgaria. Okay. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. I'm going home soon. I'm going home soon. Her friend, Raiminta, has worked with her in housekeeping since those first days. She all the time was crying in the rooms. When, um, when she started, now she's a supervisor. She was the only one catching me. Always no one else crying and coming and she crying. Uh, uh, I said, stop crying, you're annoying me. <laughs> we need to clean the rooms and that's it. Oh, oh, this and that, boyfriend, dad, and another one and everything. For me, it's the most important department, <laughs> of course. Like, we've been talking one day with some colleagues and we've been thinking, oh my God, if it's not us, the guests are not going to come back. Like, who are going to clean their rooms? Who are going to make everything clean and tidy for them? For me personally, the housekeeping is really important. Really, really important. I'm going home, oh. my sweetie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Have a lovely, sweet, quiet night. A year ago, Vanya was promoted to nighttime housekeeping supervisor. She'll be on her feet until seven in the morning. Hallelujah, my dear. Housekeeping, Vanya speaking. The pager rings. And the night starts. Housekeeping, Vanya. Tell me, darling. Shampoo, mm -hmm. four shaving kits, three soaps, one conditioner. Good evening, madam. You request something else I can assist you in? Good evening, sir. How are you? They live in their world. I live in my world where I'm like uh, counting the penny for the rent. But the Mandarin is the place that we're together. At the beginning, when I see a bag from Chanel, I was like, oh my god, you know, I was taking the bags home because it was something huge for me. But one day, you just take the bags like, Come on. You just get used to everything, you know? Tell me, darling. One box, box full of water. Even at night, housekeeping must meet their target of dealing with all requests in seven minutes. I still, sometimes I cannot, I cannot manage in seven minutes. Ugh. Take the ironing board, I'll take the, the suitcase. Two, three, four in the morning, it's like they ask for service. They just ask for something and they want it now. So there should be someone who, who should give it to them. Busy, busy. Room attendants, porters, the supervisors, reception, switchboard, concierge, everyone. Everyone is up there. The men, LG men bathroom, the toilet. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> I'm kind of looking for a new job because I want to stop this night shifts. I want to find something during the day so I can have my private life, finally. <laughs> you cannot do anything because during the day you're sleeping, you cannot go anywhere, like for example, to go out with friends for a drink. And with my boyfriend, we see each other for one hour to maximum between like my waking up and my leaving. Well, it's fine, it's fine. Tell me that link. Okay, certainly, I'll call him back, yeah? Okay, okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Darling, can you please deliver to 707 a kettle? Sorry? 707. Okay, thank you, bye-bye. Trevor, Francois Xavier at the Mandarin Oriental, how are you? Oh, I'm ecstatic, thank you very much. I would like to ask you a question for one, two, three, four tickets for Matilda, but I need the best ticket in the theater. Impossible? What is it? Oh, I will tell you something. That's, that's not a musical, that's actually a show featuring magicians. New concierge Paul is still in his first week, 
but he is already beginning to appreciate the perks of working in the five-star world. The guy who won um, Britain's Got Talent, he's in there. I'd always go and see Matilda. I changed the booking for a guest for a restaurant three or four times. It was quite difficult, but it wasn't beyond impossible. They gave me $200, and I was like, huh? I'd never seen anything like it. I prefer to go Matilda than the magician. Yeah. For me, if if I go to Sainsbury's and the, the bill comes in at more than 30 pounds for the weekly shop, I'm like, oh. <laughs> Upstairs in their suite, bride and groom Samantha and Reich are welcoming their guests from China. <laughs> Samantha always cheer me up, supporting me all the time. As is tradition, Reich's wooing his bride with envelopes full of money. Once this goes out, you how long do you need? Uh, this so quick, ten minutes maybe. Yeah, okay. Samantha and Reich have hired their own chef. He'll be responsible for producing the traditional eight-course Chinese banquet. Where's the rice? The rice. One vital ingredient appears to be missing. Have you not arranged the rice? Okay, so good. I talk. So we need to arrange rice, chef. Okay, thank you. We'll deal with it. That's he. He just needs to cook. Yeah, I'll I'll deal with all the issues. Yeah. Okay. But that's why we communicate, yeah? It's their chef, not ours. There was nearly not rice at a Chinese wedding. No, but that's what I, that's my job. That's what we do. Check everything, twice. You know, I can walk into a room and know there's a light bulb out. I can see if something hasn't been silvered. I will ask certain leading questions to some of my management team, and I will check the fact that they have the answers I want, because if they don't have the timings or they don't have the vintage of the wine, I know they're having a mental jolly. Yeah. Which one you like? This one? This Perfect. Thailand. Perfect. This. Thank you, huh? <laughs> Bride and groom Samantha and Reich share vows with their nearest and dearest. <laughs> Before this relationship, I feel, I feel quite lonely, to be honest. If we can have the marriage like this, in the rest of my life, I will be extremely happy. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see this watch. Oh, look at it. Like, look, look at his face. <laughs> we are going to go to, to a little bit around the hotel if you okay. want. Yeah. Fantastic. I want to show you the main restaurant that uh, we work with your more formal and uh, trendy places. Please around. lead the way. I'm happy. Are you a bit familiar with Knightsbridge or? The hotel is situated in one of London's most affluent neighbourhoods. You have exclusive shops, you have beautiful parkland, beautiful department store, nice bridge, you have a little bit of everything. And it's the job of a concierge to know every inch of their territory. How familiar are you with London? Well, I'm no, London as in Knightsbridge. Oh. Yeah, not, not, I wouldn't say I'm overly strong. Mr. Cha, good morning. Good morning. Francois Xavier from the Mandarin. Francois Xavier knows they have to get their guests the best tables in the best restaurants. So this restaurant has been here since 1968. Nice bridge Chinese upmarket. It's pretty impressive it stood the test yeah, of time. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. It has this pattern that is that some guests love so much. Lots of celebrities here, football players. 
And this is where you find all the famous. Sarkozy. Yeah, Mr. Sarkozy. Get in. I mean, to know somebody in a restaurant is always an advantage because it's personalized. So it's very important yeah. to always speak to somebody that you know because you know that then you leave the person in good hands. Oh, fantastic. Thank you. Sorry, how are you? Very well. So this, so Paul, this is Dominico, the restaurant manager, if you want to meet you. I think to be a good concierge in a five-star hotel, you need to understand luxury. You need to be able to appreciate good food. You need to be able to appreciate beautiful things, beautiful craftsmanship. So to a certain extent, you need to be able to understand the guest needs. Well, it's nice to see a different side to South Kensington. The only thing I'd seen previous was Dippy the Diplodocus. Oh, dear. Very good afternoon, Paul. It's François Xavier at the Mandarin Oriental. How are you? I've got my uh, director of communication coming with uh, uh, one of our top VIP that I cannot name at the moment. Uh, and they, would, they are going to see Kinky Boots tonight. Is it possible for you to keep a table at the American bar? Sarah is responsible for looking after some of the hotel's most valued guests. I was director of public relations at uh, the Four Seasons in Los Angeles and got to know many Hollywood icons, producers, directors, screenwriters, and many of them are very dear friends of mine. Can you just try to book a table, but on a quiet spot, because I don't think the person would like to be recognized. I can reassure you that you will be very happy to have him in the hotel. Mm -hmm. They come to stay at the Mandarin because they know me. But equally, you know, you're providing business, you're giving business to the hotel. A gentle rapping, <laughs> tapping at my chamber door. How are you, my darling? Oh, thank you, my darling. How you feel? How was? Did you have a good? <laughs> we could go to K Kinky Boots on Thursday, if you want. No, I want. Yeah. What else? Yeah, I've changed Tuesday at mine to Friday. No worries, either way. Yeah. Chez Sarah. <laughs> Cooking okay. at home. So what, so I'm just going to be around the hotel today. All right. Bye. Who loves you? Oddly enough, I never check into hotels. I arrive, I'm taken up to a room by Q, my personal, and everything isn't a red carpet. Uh, some of it's, um, you know, through the kitchen. <laughs> a lot of it's through the kitchen. You know, when you win a city, Paris, London, Rome, you want to go out and enjoy the place, but you can't really do that. And so that's one of the, I guess, downsides of uh, high profiles. I, I'm, I'm from the other side of the tracks. And so um, what I get in terms of perks, they're, they're all uh, gravy to me. You know, I think the only really special request that I have is privacy. Just don't bother me if I say don't. And uh, normally I don't want to be bothered. You're an exception, of course. Okay, chefs, we're calling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, soup, 15 minutes. With the wedding party in the ballroom. Thank you very much. Let's go. The banqueting team starts serving the eight course meal. It's serious now. We're going smack into big service. But he's only got eight fish. Chef. 
Where's the lady? We've got nine tables, yeah? What are we going to do? The chef brought in by the bride and groom doesn't have enough fish for each table. You're going to have to split. You're going to have to split. Yeah, the last two tables. I need one now to go. One. This plate is small. Chef, I know that, but chef. Yeah? Thank you. Come on. There we go. An event can't go wrong. You don't come to a five-star hotel for something to go wrong. No splitting anymore, yeah? I won't allow it. Let's go. Top table, please. Top table. Top table. My self-worth comes from the enjoyment that I see other people having. With the wedding in full swing, no one's noticing the missing fish. With the wedding in the ballroom and the hotel at full capacity, the night shift is as busy as ever. Housekeeping Vanya. Vanya has had enough, and she's got some news for her colleagues. I was recently offered a new opportunity at a different company and have decided to accept the offer. It has been a pleasure working with such a great team at Mandarin Oriental, but unfortunately, this, the time has come for me to leave. I will miss you all of you as you have been my second family here. Aww. That's our very good memory to each other. Yeah? Good luck to all your career, yeah? She'll be leaving the hotel in a few weeks. I'll have more time with my family, even on Skype, with something different. I'll have more time with my boyfriend. Eight, nine months for doing only night, it's enough. I'm thinking about Inside the hotel, the wedding party is winding to an end. It's a very long day for the staff. The saying in hotels are you never go out with anybody that's not in a hotel because they won't understand you. That can be hard sometimes. It's not a good career if you're not committed. I've seen relationships strained. I, I was in a relationship uh, um, some time back, and uh, my partner had a problem with it. You know? It's a vocation. For his dedication to guests' happiness, Francois Xavier is receiving an unexpected pat on the back. One of his managers, Roman, has some good news about the newly introduced Mandarin Oriental Staff Awards. Well done. We're nominating you for the fan of the quarter. Oh dear. Yeah. Um, there's an invitation to the quarterly party. Mm -hmm. You can bring a guest and if we have a little party, then basically have a couple of drinks and then the winner will be announced. Pleasure the working with you. Oh, it's more and more things. Oh dear. To be fairly honest with you, I was extremely surprised to be nominated. At school, I never used to win any award because, in fact, when I was at school, I was very different. I never used to do the, the, the utmost to achieve good result, but I was trying to think what was the minimum I could do. <laughs> so I have to admit that I've changed a lot. This one here? Yeah, this building is... Uh, oh, yeah, on the pipes. Yeah. It's been that building since uh, the 1800s. This is where I usually would go down there and then into the pits, <laughs> <laughs> down about 50 stairs. And oh, then... you're going in the visitor's entrance. Yeah. Oh, how nice. <laughs> Ooh, 
lovely. Look at this. <gasps> New concierge Paul has got the day off, and he's brought his nan in for a taste of the five-star life. So Should I try was, all these was, tea? Well, I might be a bit daring and go for a lychee and strawberry. Can I just start with the breakfast? <laughs> yeah, you can. Because <laughs> I'm a coward. Of course you can. <laughs> You don't have to copy me. This is about you. This is about what you want. That's an amuse bouche. Ooh, yeah. lovely. Oh, fantastic. This is all self taught. What you see in front of you is self taught. No, none of my family ever went to university. None of my family ever worked in the hotel industry. So if you, if you had something before you came in, it completely neutralizes it. So you're then ready to go for the whole thing. I'd be useless at a concierge because I've lived in London most of my life and I didn't know where Harvey Nichols was. No? <laughs> oh, see, I knew that at least, so that was a good start. If I'd have said that in my interview, I don't think I'd have got the job. Yeah. So, for your six, mandarin orange cake and French pineapple with raspberry and peach. Yeah. Yeah. Feels like a part of a circus sometimes. It was the most unbelievable place I've ever worked, but I don't feel out of place at all in the mandarin. No, but you do need to settle down, cos I'd like some great-grandchildren, actually. Fantastic, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got to make do with a puppy pool. There's so much that is to be enjoyed about luxury hotel that, for example, the average youth hostel can't compete with. We feel very good here. I don't know why, but we feel good here. It's like a magic. Not everybody can stay here. It's only a few of us who are able to stay in nice hotels like this. That kind of makes you feel special. Tonight, it's the hotel's staff awards ceremony. Everybody is a winner here tonight, but we had to choose one. Oh dear. The success of the hotel depends on keeping the most dedicated staff feeling happy and well-loved. It was very tight, a huh? very tight race, as you can imagine, with such talent all around. A fact recognized by general manager, Mr. Sintes. The winner for the fan of the quarter is... Francoise Rivier. The flowers, Francoise Rivier, the flowers. He looks like a French general in the Napoleonic Wars. <clears throat> I love to think that in 17 years I will still be there. I'm a man of habit and I, I don't think I could walk somewhere else um, on, above anything I love, the place where I work. Uh, okay, okay. Okay, okay, yeah, I understood, I understood, yeah, vomit, thank you. Bye. Oh. Vanya's last night shift is coming to an end. Someone vomited at reception. And uh, they, someone needs to clean it up. But no one is picking up the phone. I'm off. Hmm? Someone vomited on the reception, but I don't care anymore. It's seven in three minutes and I have to go. Goodbye, Vanya. <laughs> Goodbye, Vanya. The things you missed all the time you've been working during the night. Sleeping in one bed in my, with my boyfriend together, sharing the bed, not only the pillow. Are you gonna miss your uniform, Vanya? <laughs> no, really. <laughs> Thank you. Your friends. You see the sun. Like 
like that. <laughs> bye bye. Next time at the Mandarin Oriental Hyde Park. I'm waiting for the horse to turn up. So the horse has to be right. I can't believe it. Sometimes you come a little bit like a museum. You want to come in and you say, wow. And main away, table 25, please. Yeah. I think with a Michelin guide, to lose a second star, it would be a problem. Spencer, Matthew, Spencer Matthews and Louis Smith and Lydia Bright to name a few compete for the crown in the snow cross and ski cross in the jump live final Sunday 8.30. Next tonight, from being on the wrong side of the law to finding their faith, we are meeting the young men determined to make change in extremely British Muslims.